I feel like every vlog I've done so far, I bring you guys with me when I go to visit my sister and her little baby. My other sister also had a little baby around the same time in Canada and I haven't met him yet. So right now I'm at the airport on my way to go visit home, to go back to Canada. It's been a whole year since I've gone. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to this. I'm gonna bring you with me. Coming back here, I feel like I've been hit with such a wave of nostalgia, like seeing friends and family and familiar sights, but it also feels so new this time around. Because I mean, I have a little nephew that wasn't here the last time I came. And having spent time with him, I feel like children are just the most wonderful teachers. A couple of minutes with him and you can see the world through his curious little eyes and I realized just how present and in the moment he was and how joyful he was with the most simple things. And there's just so much beauty in that and so much to learn from that. And not seeing family is obviously one of the major downsides of living so far away, but I do feel like the silver lining is that when we do come together again, we make all the time to spend quality time together. So today, the whole family is going strawberry picking, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you how to make one of my favorite summertime recipes featuring strawberries. So right now we are in my mom's kitchen, which is actually where a lot of the first pickup limes recipes I shared on the blog were created. And you know, one recipe I made a few years ago really frequently for friends and family and they all really enjoyed it was this no-bake strawberry vegan pie recipe that I really wanna share with you today. So we went strawberry picking, we got all of these here, amazing and delicious strawberries. I wanna share the recipe with you. You're gonna find the breakdown for that recipe in the description box below, but right now I'm actually just gonna walk you through the steps. So. Let's get started. For this recipe, you'll need five cups of fresh strawberries, two cups of raw or roasted nuts. I used one cup raw almonds and one cup roasted cashews, one cup of soft pitted medjool dates, as well as another six pitted dates to use separately, a tablespoon of agave syrup, a teaspoon of lemon juice, an eighth a teaspoon of salt, and some fresh basil or mint for garnish. So we first start by making the crust. To a food processor, add the one cup of dates, the almonds, cashews, and salt. Blend it on high, stopping to scrape down the sides as needed until the mixture sticks well together. And if it's not sticking, just add a few more dates and blend it again. When it's all finished, measure out a generous half a cup of the mixture and set it aside for later. Press the remaining mixture into a nine inch pie pan, pressing it up against the edges as well. Then place this in the fridge. Next, we move on to the strawberries. We'll reserve one cup of the strawberries to use for later and use the other four cups worth to thinly slice. This is going to be our pie filling. With the one cup of strawberries that you reserved, add it to a food processor along with the agave syrup, lemon juice, and those extra six dates. Blend it on high until it's as smooth as you can make it. At this point, we can remove the crust from the fridge and layer the sliced strawberries on top. Then add the blended strawberry mixture on top of that and gently spread it to cover the whole top of the pie. And remember how we reserved a bit of the crust at the start? We're gonna now use that to add around the rim of the pie pan to create a unified crust gently pressing down as you work your way around the rim. Decorate the top with a couple of strawberries and fresh mint or basil and place it in the fridge for at least an hour or until you're ready to serve it. And that's it. It takes just 10 or 15 minutes to make this really easy, delicious and wholesome summertime snack or dessert. I hope you enjoy this pie as much as I know I do. And if you give it a try, be sure to let me know in the comments below or share a picture with us on Instagram. So we're gonna go camping in the wilderness for three days where there is no reception of any kind. The whole family, cousins and little ones included. We used to do this a lot when I was younger, but it's been a while since then.
It's amazing how much extra time you feel you have when you don't have access to the internet. We've been playing card games and board games and sports and sharing stories around the bonfire. And I'm also a very early riser, so when everyone else is still asleep, I go for walks along trails and listen to some audiobooks. And before I left, I made sure to download a few audiobooks so that I could listen to them while we were camping. And one of the books that I downloaded is one that I haven't personally listened to in years, but it was such a good book. And it's called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And I feel like it was just such a timely moment to re-listen to this audiobook because they talk about how, as children, we're taught a set of rules and we're rewarded if we do good and we're reprimanded if we step out of line. And as we grow older, when we're not kids anymore, we still tend to do this, but to ourselves. And as we mature though, we have the wisdom and the power to break free of the limitations that we place on ourselves. And the book essentially shares four agreements that can help you do just that. So I'd like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video and for being an ongoing source of inspiration and knowledge. If you're interested in getting your own 30 day free trial, visit audible.com forward slash pickup limes and you'll also get a book of your choice for free. So, so far we've gone biking, swimming, berry picking, camping, pretty much everything I love to do in the summer. This place is like one giant backyard of fun and adventure, but one thing we haven't done yet, which is one of my favorite things to do when we're here, aside from eating all of the amazing vegan food, is to go hiking. So right now I'm gonna take you to see one of my favorite viewpoints. The first time I did this hike, I thought this was the final view, and I already thought it was so beautiful. But wait till you see the view at the end. We're almost there, we're at the top of the mountain, as you can tell by all of the snow around me. And uh, if you ever come to Vancouver, you need to try this hike. It's called St. Mark's Summit, and it's the most beautiful view ever. Just check this out. Look at those mountains. I've been noticing I keep calling Canada home, even though I moved away from here a year and a half ago. But to me, it always will be because it's where I grew up, it's where my family is, and I just think it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And in a week, I'm going to leave Canada to go back to the Netherlands. And sometimes friends and family will ask me which one I consider to be my home, but to me, they both are. You know how they say home is where the heart is? Well, I have my heart in more than one place. Can I try? No, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Let me do this. Okay, okay, okay. I can see you. <laughs> Try it. Okay, so we're on top of this mountain surrounded by snow, and you wouldn't believe that it's like 30 degrees. He's gonna hit me. <laughs> come over, come over. What do you think of this hike? I love it. Why? I think it's my favorite hike, actually. Why? Because it's so rewarding at the end you have such an amazing view it's still a decent workout because it's quite exhausting at sometimes mm -hmm. um, well in this time of year you still have a little bit of snow up there which gives it a nice little cold breeze even though it's a warm day huh? and um, yeah it's just the nature and, and the sounds mm -hmm. 